Hello and welcome to Data Publication 2. This is the second part of our videos. This will focus on creating R packages. This is part of our Data Topics series of workshops. I am Ryan Womack. I am the Data Librarian at Rutgers University Libraries based in Alexander Library in New Brunswick. All of the links for this series will be in the description below. This LibGuides page for the Data Topics series is a jumping off point for everything that we're going to be talking about. Uh, the Data Publication 2 workshop has its own page. There is a GitHub repository for all of the Data Topics materials and you can go here to retrieve any of the files that we're talking about. But I am going to work from the presentation website uh, version and if you go there um, you'll see the part that we covered in the first section about public external data repositories runs up through here where it says fair sharing uh, and then the our package creation part is down at the bottom that's what we're going to do now and this is much more of a hands-on thing we're going to walk through commands useful in package creation and this is really m my extracts from the R packages book I don't claim any originality to this content uh, the R packages book by Hadley Wickham and Jennifer Bryan covers what we're going to cover here plus a lot of other detail that is very useful for actually getting set up in particular we're going to do a kind of version of what's in chapter one which they call the whole, whole game, uh, which really runs through the main components of setting up a package. Um, and we're going to do that run through in a slightly modified version. But, you know, just letting you know that the book has all this material. Um, if you prefer to work from the book, you won't really be missing much if you skip this presentation. And, but if you want a quick um, kind of intro to this content, this presentation might be useful for you. Uh, so I'm going to work from, uh, as I said, there's a few versions of the material that you can pull. Um, I'm going to use the rpackages.r file. Uh, so you could save that. Uh, that's the r commands that I'm going to execute. Um, if you prefer to have the marked up document files are markdown or quarto formats you can pull those and for the purpose of this presentation I am going to use the r packages.r in our studio but I'm also going to re be referring to the web version of the uh, descriptive material that's also available in a few formats so you could if you prefer to grab the PDF you could do that if you prefer Word. You could pull that. I'm going to use the dark HTML, um, which is typically um, the I, I tend to prefer a, a dark format. You'll see my R Studio has also been uh, set to a dark background, so I'm going to go ahead and use this. But you have the light version as well, accessible if you prefer that. Uh, and it's easy to toggle back and forth between those. Okay, so this uh, content is the same in all these documents. It um, it's going to describe what we're gonna what we're gonna talk about. But I am going to fire up my R Studio, and I am going to load the R packages R file. So we have something here to walk through. All right, so setup. Three things you need in addition to your R and R Studio are the packages DevTools, R Oxygen 2, and test that. So you need to install those. If you don't have them, you can use install.packages to install them the usual way. I have started using this pack package. So PAC uh, attempts to be a little bit more complete in terms of helping you resolve dependencies and things like that. A little bit more sophisticated 
about your package management. So the code example that I'm showing is first installing pack, which you do have to do the old way, install.packages, uh, loading the pack library, loading pack using the library command, and then using pack's version of in install command, which is pkg install to pull these in. Now I've already done that on my system, so I'm not going to rerun those commands. Um, but once those three things are installed, you will have to uh, activate them in your work session with the library command. So I'm just running line 17 through 19 on my screen in the R code file, uh, library dev tools, library de R oxygen to library test that. Okay, these are going to provide a number of our useful functions that we need to create our package. Uh, just as a warm up, we can take a look at the package version uh, to confirm that we've got a current version of DevTools. We can also use DevTools to run the session info command, which um, kind of gives a complete snapshot of your system. What are you? running what version of R, what version of R Studio, um, and what versions of all of the R packages that you've got going R. Uh, so particularly before you jump in to um, develop your packages, make sure that you are running the latest versions of these three packages and you're running the latest versions of the packages you need uh, for the one you're creating. And it might be a good idea to actually save this information about this, the session info um, in case you need to refer back to it. Like I set up my package using this particular setup. It's a, it's a useful thing to have around sometimes. All right, so we're going to create a package. A package is simply a directory that contains, you know, kind of a structured content. And in theory, you could manually create the whole thing with a text editor. However, there are a number of useful helper functions, so please take advantage of those. One of them is the create package function, which you will use to create your package. Now, the package name, um, let me go over here to talk about the naming conventions. Um, you know, packages that go onto CRAN have to only have letters, ASCII letters, numbers, and they can have a dot, but it's really recommended don't use a dot because a dot looks like, makes whatever you're typing look like a file extension, and it's really um, not recommended. So essentially you should have a very simple uh, name that starts with a letter and it can use uh, what's called camel case to indicate um, word breaks by using capitalization. That's what I've done here with this little capital P package. And your directory that the package resides in will have the same name as the name of the package. Um, it's important to think about that name of the package that's the one thing that really can't be changed later once your package starts to get adopted. Um, and it should be descriptive. It shouldn't be confusing to people or seem like some other packages out there in the workspace in the CRAN universe. So you need to like kind of look at the landscape and think about something that will um, have some staying power and not confuse people. So, okay, let me go ahead and run that create package command. And you'll see what happens is it has outlined a number of steps. Um, it has created all this stuff, um, written a bunch of files, and it has opened, this is the, the critical part here, it's opened that new package directory in a new RStudio session. So you saw the RStudio flash there. Um, it's basically a second window that's defaulting to this little package directory. 
Now I'm going to leave this. Um, actually, I think I, I won't. Uh, in testing, I was leaving this window open. I think I'm safe. I'm going to close the old window and just recall that we're now in a new R session. We're starting almost from scratch, except that we have our little package directory. And you can see some of the skeleton of files that it's put in there. Um, the git ignore, the r build ignore, the r history, the dot files there are kind of system settings that we typically don't need to mess with. Um, if you want to read more about those, you can consult the r packages book. The r project uh, file, the little package.rproj, is a place to store kind of settings related to the project. Um, it's a little thing, but it, you know, basically you, you don't want to get rid of that or um, mess around with it too much unless you want to change some of these options. Um, but that's what's that's an RStudio thing that helps manage the, the files. The remaining pieces, the description, the namespace, and the R are content that we're going to customize to create our package. Now, we need to bring some things back in at this point. We need to load our R packages R code, and we need to reload those three packages with our library commands because this is a brand new R session. So we're um, we just need to kind of get back to where we were. Okay, so now I've reloaded those packages. I'm up to line 39. Um, I'm just going to, out of an abundance of caution, use the proj set command to make sure that the active project is set to this directory. Um, that's often taken care of for you, but there's no harm in just double checking it. So the command for that is proj set. And now we have another setup command that you would just run once at the beginning. That's the use git command. So, you know, Using Git for version control and potentially hosting your project on GitHub for sharing and making it available to the world um, are very good ideas. Uh, Git partic in particular will help you keep track of your version changes, roll back any undesirable changes, uh, collaborate with other contributors, and you know it's probably something you want to use. Uh, the use git command makes it easy for you to start that in the package context. So um, without going further into git, we're just going to do that. We're going to initialize git and the question that it asks you is almost like an are you human ver verification. Every time you run this command it'll be a little bit different. Um, the yes answer might move around. It might not be the first, second, or third, it, you know, can move. Uh, but you want to read this, and you want to answer the thing that basically means yes. So here I'm going to say, for sure, I do want to commit, meaning to track, these new files that were just created. These files have not been tracked by Git up to now, and I want to start doing that. So I say two for, for sure. And if I was starting long-term development on a project, I would agree to this second question as well and I would then have to restart our studio and load my libraries again since this is just a demo I'm not going to do that so I'm going to decline here but in practice you should you should agree for a long-term project um, I'm just saving some time by not rebooting my R studio yet again all right so what is a package all about? A package is usually about sharing code and or data. And just to refresh you on like how our functions work, um, I've got a couple of functions here. One I call funky add. It is a function that adds whatever two numbers you put in and then adds a, a one to it just to throw the addition off a little bit. Uh, the second is called random add which does the same thing. It takes two numbers, um, but instead of adding one, it adds plus or minus a random integer. 
uh, based on the normal distribution. And when I run those lines of code up through line 56, I can see that those things appear in my workspace. These are things that I've manually added. They show up in the top right in my list. And when they're there, I can run them and get results. Every time I run that random uh, one, I'm going to get a different result, obviously. And this is how we are normally coding in R on a day-to-day -day basis. But for a package, we want to do something a little different. We want to create a permanent version of the function that's actually going to reside in this R directory in the, the package down on the bottom right. And we could ma manually edit a file, but again, we have little helpers. So the use R function in line 63 helps us to create that, that special R file. So I say use R, the name of the function, funky add. Uh, basically, it's popped up. This is going to be a text file ending in .r. And in the file, I just want to put my function definition. So I copy that function, paste it here, save it. I can then close it. I'm going to do the same thing for the random add and copy random add. The full specification of the function, including the assignment operator at the beginning, right? Random add arrow. Um, and of course, this can be any function, any you know, very lengthy function with a lot of steps and conditional checks and things, uh, whatever you like. The whole point is to automate the stuff that you're doing regularly that's a little complicated. Um, once we've done that, if we peek into the R directory, we'll see, OK, those two files are now sitting there. Um, I'm going to now remove the global funky add and random add just so we, we kind of go back to our default setting. So line 68 and 69 take away the, the functions we manually added. OK, so now if I say funky add to 2, what happened? It can't find a funky add. We don't have funky add active in the workspace anywhere. Um, but we can get it from this packaged version. The way we do that is with the command load all. Load all is a command you're going to use a lot if you're doing package development. So uh, just again out of caution I am going to make sure that I am still sitting in the right directory that I'm not going to load anything unexpected. So I set the working directory to my directory. I set the project directory to my directory I should have mentioned at the beginning, this is just, you know, my local path on my system. This is the one piece. You're running, if you're running this code, you're going to have to edit that. You change that to the directory that you want it to be. Change it to your R directory on your system using the syntax conventions of your operating system. Okay, I did that just out of caution. Uh, I'm going to now load all and because I'm sitting in the little package directory, it says, OK, you want to load a little package. I can see that this is a package directory, so I'm loading that. And now I can try to run a funky add, and I'll get a result, because it has loaded the, all of the functions. Whatever you put in that R directory are going to be active functions for your package. So that's really the where the action is at for your functional code. Uh, just to um, keep up with the uh, web version, just that we're now, we've gone through the 2.3, the Git section, we've gone through 2.4, writing a function, and we're now up to section 2.5, right? And again, you can, the same code is here. You can open that up and peek and get the code. Um, and Let's see. So I want to go back over here. The check function is one also that you're going to use over and over again while you're developing a package. 
Uh, so we type check and it runs through a whole suite of things. You'll see there's a ton of output that kind of starts spitting out. Uh, this is all stuff to basically check how the package is working. Right? So it starts out um, getting things ready, uh, looking for the component, normal components of a package, um, checking the description, check, check, check. All the green checks are good things. When we see some red or you know, basically non-green checks, these are warnings. All right, so it got to this point and it said, hmm, um, in the description, you're supposed to say what kind of license you're using, um, but you didn't. You didn't specify a standard license, so that could be a problem. Uh, that's not a like completely package killing error, but it's uh, it's an issue. The other thing that it warns about is we're not going to talk too much in the quick demo about this namespace, but put a pin in that. That's going to be discussed a little bit in the follow-up video to this. Um, we want our package to work everywhere, all the time, every possible R setting, R, R environment. So R norm, even though it's uh, built into the base R stats package, um, it's a much better practice to specify. Now, I just use the R norm command, remember, in the random ad that appears here. Um, so that's, you know, an piece of R functionality that we kind of leaned on. We assumed it was there. Um, but when you're writing a, a package, you want to be much more careful about that. You want to say, um, we're going to import that from the stats, the base R stats, and import that function. So we have an explicit declaration that we're going to be using R norm from the stats package in case someone has a setup where that's not loaded by default or that's been overwritten by something else um, that when we load our package it'll know. Go back go back to basics, go to the fundamental address for that R norm uh, and we won't generate an error in that case. So it gave us those two warnings uh, or a warning and a note as it classifies them and you're going to want to like check 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 until you can get rid of all these things. So let's fix the license issue uh, to start with. So there are helper functions. Um, this is in the section 2.6, this filling in the details. Uh, when you release software code, you want to have it licensed so that people know what they can do with it. Uh, two of the most common software licenses are the MIT license, which is kind of like you can do whatever you want with the data as long as you credit us for it. The GPL license is a license that says if I'm making my, my data my data or my package is publicly available and open source and if you use it and you release new software built on it that source software source also has to be open source. So it's sometimes called copyleft kind of license. Uh, basically you're saying uh, things that use my free code should also be free. And it's really, you know, your decision how you want. There, there are pros and cons to all that. There's some discussion in the R Packages book about how you can, places you can look to make those choices. Um, but for our demo purposes, we just want to know that there's, there's a quick use function. And there's the same for GPL. There's a use GPL license function um, that we can, we can just run that command and it's going to add the correctly formatted files to our space. You notice now we have these license files. Right? So the license um, is there. It's formatted. It's this markdown file that's the main license formatted. Um, and it also adds something to this dot file, this R build ignore. Um, that's telling it, you know, don't get bad out of shape when we when we build this package, um, the fact that this is in a markdown format is, you know, it's not something that we're going to use to create other parts of the package. It's just going to sit there by itself and we're going to ignore it when we generate the R documentation and stuff. Um, 
So, you know, essentially those little details, the use function takes care of for you. Uh, now we can run check again. Let me just go back and do that. And we should have at least gotten rid of that one problem. So we should have only the only one remaining problem, which is this issue with the global function definition. Now that one I'm not going to fix in this, again, quick and dirty demo. We're going to live with that for a little while. But, you know, if you're working on a package, there's really a few levels of working on a package. One is you might just want it for your personal use, in which case you can be a little sloppy and um, get away with some of these errors. But as you continue to work on it, you might want to share it with others. Uh, you might want to put it up on GitHub. You're going to start to want to take the checking more seriously and try to fix those problems that may cause issues for other users. And certainly if you want to have your package officially accepted as a CRAN package um, and made available globally for anyone to, to discover and get credit for it, and that's wonderful, you're going to have to pass all of these checks um, and the tests, which we'll also talk about. Okay, so we have started to fill in some of these details. Uh, another detail is that we want to, we, you know, when we're in R, we normally have this access to help, right? If I say R norm, question mark R norm, I get a pop-up help window of, you know, what are we looking at? What's this um, this function about? Uh, how do I use it? What kind of arguments does it take? Um, and so on, right? So how do I get this? And this is something that you will have to have if you want your package to be accepted on CRAN. You want this description to be there. You also want it to be there for basically anyone else to use. Um, or even so that you don't forget how the commands work. Um, this is a big piece of it. How do we get that? Well, again, this is a text file that's going to sit in our directory. Um, it's actually in this man folder. That's the manuals or the you know manual reference for things. We could create these by hand, but again, we have a helper function, a helper way to do this. This is a little different. Okay, so for every function, I'm going to want to go into the the file, the r.r file, and I'm going to use a little trick. I'm going to just put my cursor in there, usually safer to put it at the beginning, go under code, and say insert r oxygen skeleton. So this is kind of midway down the list of things you can do under code in RStudio. This is again like where RStudio has this helper stuff, right, that it makes these things a little quicker than they would be otherwise. All right, so all this stuff that begins with a comment symbol is going to be processed by R oxygen, right? This is why we loaded that package. And it's going to spit out a well-formatted documentation file. So I have these at statements to define different fields, right? So at examples, I can say, you know, func uh, funky add. And here's, you know, you would just put in like sample code, right? How, how do you type this function? What are things you would typically do with this function? Um, so I can put in an example. I can explain it did. You know, it looked at my function and said, I see two parameters. So it filled those that information in for me. Um, I can flesh that out a bit and just say something like a number, uh, another number. What does, the, what does the function return? Numbers added together plus noise. One way to look at it. Um, at export, typically you don't mess with that one. You just let that one go. The title, also we can edit the title. Funky edition. 
right we do something like that and then save it and now if we run the command document this is another like load all like check it's something that you're going to be running a lot when you're working on the documentation you say document and it does two updates it updates the namespace and it updates the manual man directory so in the man directory we can now see there's a thing called funky add and it essentially put this into the correct format so the you can see the raw format has these kind of um, tags for you know what goes where so the name of the of the um, function is funky add the title is funky addition um, and we could again as I said we could edit this manually but usually you you don't <laughs> it's easier to learn the R oxygen syntax uh, which takes care of a lot of the the little details for you and you can then kind of concentrate on the main elements so we have this this file we have our namespace which has said okay now we've got a thing called funky add that we want to export and make sure it's available to people the namespace is where we're going to list the functions and packages that are and dependent packages that are are part of what we're building all right so now um, we can actually do a question mark funky add and see that now for our new function we've got docu documentation it's still a little bit skeletal because we didn't put too much in there but you can see it formatted it with the standard R section headings um, and included the edits that we made so that's the documentation you're going to want to do that for every function and also for any data that you add. Data will also can get a description um, using the same system. All right, so we, we've, we've kind of got a basic skeletal package. Um, I'm going to check it again just to make sure every time you do something major, you, you want to check and make sure that still behaving well consistently. We're going to continue to ignore this problem with the R norm. Um, and then I'm going to install it. So again, you know, in this package development, 90% of things work just like regular R, but you have to keep in mind a few differences, right? So unlike a package that you've downloaded and installed directly using that install packages command or the pack app, um, this is being installed locally so we, we run this install command to make sure that we're pulling that this package will build correctly from the local location right so again you want to make sure that all these things work correctly that they're done um, and I would still use this load all at this point because if we run random add, it's going to say, I, I, I can't find it. <laughs> um, and if we, if we try to load the little package library, it'll say, okay, we can load that. But we still can't find random add. Uh, I'm going to try one other thing, which is to do the kind of long form And you see what happened here, right? We worked on funky ad. We worked on funky ad and we exported it. Uh, we did not do that to random ad. So random ad is not an exported object. So R is still not finding it. So this is all to kind of say the library command won't work as you expect it to for a package that's under development, that's really not complete yet. Um, if we do um, funky add, that will give us an answer because that function was exported. But if we've got things that we haven't finished working on yet, we're going to want to do this load all. 
and so load all will essentially kind of ignore some of the more formal requirements of the, the full install plus library process and it'll just grab everything that's in that directory and now random add works so I hope you can see a little bit from that example like you just have to be careful with these packages under development and this load all command is your friend um, but also be careful with that right because random add if we're just testing out random add we want to get it in with load all if we're trying to make sure that our package is going to work for final installation we don't want to use load all at that point we want to make sure it works with the install command um, and that's where every single um, function that's talked about has to be exported has to have documentation you know like you got to be complete about this the final piece of um, the sort of package building process is this testing so that and I'll just talk very quickly about testing here the use test that function um, is used to create a testing directory this is a one-time function we run this one time let's say use test that and we get a few messages that now a tests directory has been opened up okay inside the test directory we can have code that will run and test things and inside the test that directory inside of tests is where we would put like other things that we want to use like um, the data that might be used for a test and things like that okay so if I let's say okay I want to write a test for funky ad uh, let me say a word about why do we why do we want to test uh, we want to have an automated way of checking that everything is working as it's supposed to now this is required if you're gonna push to CRAN so you go to CRAN you will uh, have to have functional tests that's one of the things they look for and it may seem ridiculous to be testing something like addition like this but if you think of more complex functions that are depending on other packages um, you know something upstream of your package might change and how are you going to know that that's influencing your results well it's a good idea to have these automatic tests that that what goes in is coming out the way you expect it and also for other people on other operating systems with other setups you're never sure unless you're running these tests what's going to affect them so it's again not the first thing you're going to think about when writing up your package but as you move ahead with fully developing it's an important stage all right so I want to test funky ad I test funky add by saying use test funky add. What does this do? This generates an R function that's going to sit in our testing directory. All right, so I am going to say test that. Uh, my description here is just like what is it about? That addition works. Um, and I want it as I expect it according to the funky add function so if I do funky add and notice it wouldn't be as simple to test the random add function like this but I'm gonna test funky add I'm gonna say 2 plus 2 it should equal 5 in my version of addition so expect equal funky add 2 plus 2 and after the commas whatever the result should be will be 5 I save that I can close it and see this is what's now inside the test that directory the test that dot R is the script that is going to loop through all of the checking for the little package based on what's inside the test that directory so inside the test that directory we will put as many of these functions as we as we want to 
once we've got that set up, this little miniature testing zone inside the tests directory, um, and I'll just close these files just to be clear where we are, uh, you can use the function test. And it checked, and I passed the funky add function. Um, you know, so obviously we could do something even you know more complex there. We could test a whole array of numbers and you know a, a lot of things that we could do. All right, let me not go further down the testing road, but you know, building out this structure, uh, the R directory, the man directory, which is automatically generated, remember, by the R oxygen. And the testing directory are all things that we that we're going to want to do. Once we're, um, you know, satisfied with those things, we we're going to check over and over again. Um, and there's one other piece that I didn't really cover uh, is this description. So the description is also just a text file. This one we can just go in and directly edit it. So I can change the. Um, we don't want to change the official name, the, you know, the CRAN R name of the package, but we can have a, a kind of subtitle, title a small package for demo purposes, something like that. Um, here you can add your author information or multiple author information. There's instructions in the R packages book about the various formats that we could do with this. Um, I'll just say Ryan Womack at example.com. Uh, uh, the role, I'm the author and creator. There are other abbreviations for things like funder and things like that. Um, the description of what the par uh, package does. This package is pretty useless. Um, you know, uh, maybe we would want to warn <laughs> Uh, warn users don't don't bother to download this it's just a testing thing but you know that's normally where you're going to really have a paragraph or two about the full functionality of your package um, the other things are a little bit more technical you might not want to mess with them except you know that license right that's the specification right there where it says we're using the MIT license and it's located in the file called license so once you're done with that you can save it and I'm going to go back and check and I've got two notes um, my description field should contain one or more complete sentences so it's actually attacking my syntax here maybe because I don't have a period let's see if that if that makes a difference um, try that. And I still have my R norm error that, you know, we never fixed that part. Yes, okay, so it does expect a period to end a sentence. Um, all right, so I've checked it. I've done reasonably well. I still haven't fixed all the problems. I'm going to install it. And again, it's pulled all that in. Um, I should still be able to access my funky add, the exported function. Um, I can do things now like not only check the funky add documentation, um, that's interesting. So that kind of bombed out. Um, there's another way to access help for the full package that I wanted to check. All right, so this is the description that I've edited, right? So it does have my modifications title, a small package for demo purposes, my name, and the description of the package as being useless. Um, you notice it sort of automatically listed me as the maintainer and when the package was built. Um, so it's keeping track of that kind of descriptive information as you go along. Um, I think to fix the help for the function, that's another case where 
Uh, I think I need to do a load all to get that to come back. Yep. So again, little pieces not quite all in place for a final uh, export. But this is the this is as far as we are going to go in a short demo. Uh, but this is basically how it works. Um, in the um, HTML description, you know, we have a kind of review of what's happened. We use the commands in this order. Um, this image from the R packages book kind of describes the process, right? We're, we're working on code for a while. We're writing those R functions um, using the use R uh, command. And then we're loading them and checking them, loading them and checking them. Um, we fill in our other information with like a license statement. We edit the R oxygen component of each of the functions. And again, just as a refresher, the R oxygen component, what we're talking about is this little commented out metadata section that, that we can insert into the top of every function with this insert our oxygen skeleton and then edit it as we need to. Uh, and then there's the testing component where we set up a test directory using the use test that command and then we write tests and iterate there. And all along we're kind of checking, checking, checking when we're satisfied we would then have a, a product that we could then start to think about exporting, possibly pushing it out to GitHub, things like that. So this is the sequence that we followed. Uh, another way to look at these functions are the ones that you do once uh, to get them set up and the ones that you do multiple times. So create package, use git, use MIT license, use test that, uh, use GitHub and use README. We didn't talk about those, but those are helper functions for if you want to uh, create the kind of README and structure that's expected for a project on GitHub. Um, so those are very useful. We didn't demonstrate those. But each of these is used as a one-time setup uh, to create the main components of the package. We use things like use R, um, use test, and use package to make sure that we're correctly importing and referencing uh, dependencies that are required. And throughout multiple times um, while you're doing this, you're loading all, you're revising the documentation with document, you're testing and you're checking. Right? So these are like things you do all the time to kind of make sure things are going smoothly. All right. so. We're going to stop this uh, recording here and do another part that's going to talk about um, section three, which is more from the book R Packages. Some of the other things you want to think about, this is not going to be a coding walkthrough, but just a talk through of uh, a few of these issues from section three of the documentation. So thank you for your attention. Um, I hope to see you back for the, the next part, and I'm going to sign off here.